We're back mixing art with AI, and I'm gonna show you how to create these absolutely insane animations, morphing between images using AI or from your browser really easily. I'm using artbreeder.com. This video isn't sponsored in any way. This tool is just at the moment the most powerful and user-friendly AI I found. In the last video, we covered how to create and manipulate images using Artbreeder in depth. Now here's how to animate and morph them all together. Let's go over to the top right and select create. And you can animate four out of the five of these categories. You can animate general, you can animate portraits, you can animate album art, and you can animate landscapes as well. Let's start with portraits. First thing we need to do is upload some of our own images. So let's go to upload. We can select upload and then choose them from here. And down the bottom, we can see images that I've already uploaded because it does take some time to upload them. You can see we're in a queue here and then it takes about an hour to process after that's done. And it does give you the warning that uploads are only approximations of the original. And that's because they're processing them to fit inside their AI model. So if we go down here to the Seinfeld characters that I've uploaded, you can see that the Elaine one looks pretty identical, but with Jerry, there's some slight differences in his mouth and the very edges of his eyes, which are subtle, but kind of noticeable if they're a familiar face. George looks fine, but there is some slight differences in the Kramer upload. So maybe try uploading another image if you need it to be really identical. So once we've uploaded our images, we can go to create, select portraits, and then choose animate. Now you can see the ones I've already created, but let's go up to the top and select create a new portrait animation. And down here is where we add our first image. So I'm gonna select this plus, and it gives me some options of images to choose from. These are random images that people have created on Artbreeder. We could also choose search and choose from images that have already been tagged. We can choose from trending images, images that we've created and starred, images we've created, and images that we've uploaded as well. So while we're in uploaded, let's select Jerry as our first image, and then let's add Elaine, and then next Kramer, and then George. And I'm also gonna add Jerry again at the end because we want to create a seamless loop. So once it gets to the end, it will start from Jerry again. Now there's a few more things we should know about before we generate. On the top right here, we have our frames per second. At the moment, we've got 24, which is a very standard rate for video. This is how many images will be visible every second. I wouldn't want to go below 12 frames per second because that'll start to look really particularly choppy. Over 30 frames per second, it will look smoother, but it's probably gonna be probably imperceptible. And then here it calculates how many images we have, how many seconds and how many total frames that will be. So the duration is determined down here. So we've got two seconds between each image. And we also have a drop down menu for the animation curve that we're going to choose. By default, this is linear. So this will animate at the same speed between each two characters. So we can change that to ease in and ease out, ease in or ease out. And each one has a setting of quad, cubic, quart or quint. And they just mean how severe that easing is going to be. So if we select ease in and out quart, what this now means so at the start where it's Jerry, it will be a very slow morph and then in the middle get very fast and quickly become something that looks very close to a lane and then slowly morph in to the final lane image. I think linear is probably gonna work best, but I'm gonna render out two versions so we can compare them when we get our results. Now with a free account, you're only limited to rendering 100 frames. So you might wanna drop the frame rate or drop the timings or number of images to sneak under that if you don't wanna spend anything. For the purposes of creating this in the previous video, I upgraded to a Startup Reader account so I could get a lot more frames and image uploads but you can definitely do all of this on a free account. You just limit it to how many frames you can render. There's also this preview window up here. And if we play this, we can see that it's fading between all of the images. This is just so you can double check timings and make sure the images are in the right order. It's just doing a crossfade between each of them. There will be an actual morph using the AI when we get our final render. And once we're happy with that, we can go over here and click generate. And that gives us the prompt, your video is processing. You will receive an email link when the video is ready. From the ones I've done ahead of time, this takes less than five minutes. And here is our results. It looks great. The morph is smooth and it looks really bizarre. The faces in between are really strange. It's exactly what we're after. And this is using the linear ease. And to the right, here's what a quant ease in and ease out looks like. So there's a pulse within the speed of the animation. It's fast in the transitions and then slow on the key images. I did some more experiments. Here's one with Van Gogh self portraits which didn't quite work as well as I thought. And that's because there's a lot of texture and brush stroke in the images, and that kind of gets muddled when processed by the AI. The Frida Kahlo ones, which are much more realistic paintings, I think worked really well and gave a pretty interesting result, being that it's the same person just morphing between different paintings and some other characters you might recognize as well. Now you can do the same process to create animations for general, album arts, and landscapes. Now the final width and height of these renders is it's 1024 pixels by 1024. So not quite 1080 by 1080, but I think you could scale that up and get away with it. So that is a downside that it's not exactly HD, but kind of expected. And I don't think this tech is that far away from being able to render in 4K. 
I made a short playlist of some related videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. Thank you.